good evening everyone on behalf of idbi capital i welcome you to the q2 fy22 earnings call of indian railways catering and tourism corporation or irctc on behalf of idbi capital i thank the management for giving us the opportunity to host a call we have with us the management represented by ms rajni hasija cmd and mr ajit kumar director finance and cfo i would now like to hand over the call to the management for opening remarks and later we can open the floor for q and a thank you and over to you rajni ma'am a very good evening to everyone i welcome you all to this con call of irctc limited for the quarter that is ended on 30th september 2021 i hope that you and your dear ones are safe and i also wish a very happy diwali and a healthy and a prosperous year for everyone now if we start discussing about the uh, results of the quarter 2 of the financial year 2022 the quarter has really seen some uh, seen moderation in infections and continuing momentum in the vaccination which has been positive in the travel and uh, hospitality industry which has started reviving now further this places industry in a very good position going into the festive season so the though the risk of the third wave is still not completely behind earlier today irctc has announced its financial results for the quarter and a half yearly ended on september 2021 and the same has been disclosed on both exchanges too i shall first give a brief overview of the quarter this quarter results post which shall we shall be taking up the questions and answering them well on behalf of management in this quarter that is quarter 2 for the financial year 22 irctc yet again demonstrated its resilient business model and has been able to significantly improve its operational performance while normalization in the catering and the package drinking water and the tourism is still going to take some more time internet ticketing has not been able to surpass its performance in the pre covid period but in fact in this quarter that is quarter 2 of the financial year 22 has been the best ever quarter for this segment so i congratulate all participants in this on a consolidated basis quarter 2 financial year 22 revenue came at around 404.9 crore seeing a strong growth from quarter 1 with the revenue was only 243.4 crores so there is a significant improvement quarter to quarter given that the quarter 2 of the financial year 21 had the impact of pandemic abita on absolute basis was in uh, was at uh, rupees 211.5 crores in the quarter 2 of fiscal 22 which is much higher than uh, 111.5 crores in the previous quarter and again the loss of a 5.6 crore in the quarter 2 with of the previous year if we exclude the other income similarly eps of 9.9 grew from rupees 5.2 that is earning per per share on quarter to quarter and again some minor loss uh, in year year over year importantly both abita and uh, earning per share in the, this quarter that is in the quarter 2 of the financial year 22 has been higher than that in the quarter 4 of the financial year fiscal year 20 level as well with the resilient per- performance in this quarter gradual opening up of the economy and the festive season vaccination happening i believe that icdc is placed very well to continue to demonstrate improvement in its, in its other operational areas and the performance is going to be better i shall now hand over the call to my colleague and our cfo shri ajit kumar to brief you on the financial and segmental performance of the company thank you very much good evening everybody and sachi greetings to you and your dear ones I shall first give a brief overview about Q1 FY22 results, post which we shall have the question and answer session. Q2 FY22 revenue saw a sharp improvement both on quarter on quarter and year on year basis. The revenue of Rs. 404 crore grew by Rs. 
by 66.4 percent quarter on quarter, and by 3.6 times year on year, given that Q2 FY21 had the impact of the pandemic. Given that internet ticketing, ticketing continued to drive the growth, as you know, it has the highest margin amongst the business segments. The Vita margin continued to make a new high and crossed the 50 percent mark and was at 52.2 percent versus 45.8 percent quarter on quarter. And compared to a minor loss in Q2 FY21, if you exclude the other income. Let us now move to the business segments of the company. The first one, the internet ticket ticketing. This segment continues to be the most resilient business segment. Q2 FY22 revenue internet ticketing was at an all time high at rupees 265.3 crore, growing by 77% quarter on quarter and significantly higher than rupees 58.3 crore in Q2 FY21. The growth was driven by both the growth in ticketing volume and in non service charge revenues. The Vita margin moved back from 80% and uh, was at 83.1% versus 77.9% quarter on quarter and 58% year on year basis. The capital segment has maintained a declining trend in Evita loss. For Q2 FY22, the segment reported a very minor loss of just to be 15 lakhs versus rupees 4.7 crore in Q1 FY22 and loss of rupees 33 crore in Q2 FY21. Rainy has also mentioned the momentum in improvement revenue and EBITDA. The Q2 FY22 revenue for the segment grew by 41% quarter on quarter to rupees 41.2 crore and against rupees 9.2 crore in Q2 FY21. EBIT margin improved to 6.8% for Q2 FY22 versus 6.2 percent quarter on quarter and a loss in Q2 FY21. The tourism segment which has been the most hit by the pandemic for us as well as the entire industry. This is a continue to see mutual revenue and this loss is at EBIT level. The cash and bank balance is a network of company as of the end of Q2 FY22 it will be 1945 crore and will be 160 crore respectively. That brings you to the end of this opening remark. Now we can move to the question and answer system. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin with the question and answer session. Anyone wishing to ask a question, may please press star in one on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself in the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Janesh Joshi from Prabhudas Clean Other Private Limited. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, Madam, I just have one hypothetical question. I mean, if we assume that the decision to share the convenience fee had not been withdrawn, uh, what recourse uh, would we have taken? I mean, I want to understand, do we have the autonomy to take a, a price hike or charge on a per passenger basis? So just wanted your thoughts on that. Shall I answer now or you have something more to ask, sir? I have a follow up, but I'll ask that after you answer this question. Let me handle the first one. It is good in the interest of IRCBC that the decision of the sharing of the revenue of, the, of uh, convenience fee has been withdrawn. But had that not been withdrawn, what we would have done? As we have been mentioning in various uh, con calls, that uh, uh, IRCBC has been given a liberty to decide it convenience fee, the amount that can be charged. That amount in various conferences, investor needs also, we uh, investors have been suggesting that why not charge uh, per passenger. At that time, management has been answering, let's not be that greedy. Secondly, we have also been given some dispensation to the UPR. 
we are almost thirty percent transactions are getting we are getting less of the convenience fee. So had the decision not been withdrawn, certainly we we would have worked on those lines. And for that we needed to have a full board and uh, lot many. Uh, com uh, decisions to be taken, which would have taken some time at least. So that forum was open for us, for which we had already started working. The management had already started working on those lines. So that alternative was available with us. Uh, but at the same time, you never know how this is going to take a view, because ultimately this was to be decided by a BOD, Board of Directors. So where we various uh, thoughts. Schools that sort of schools are there. So this was the option available for IRCTC. We were left with that option either to increase the license fee. Actually, withdrawing the benefits to UPI we can't dream of because it is our own indigenous product and we work in our own neighbour Bharat. Or we would have for intensified other resources which we are already doing. That that you know that our dependency on the convenience fee resources is gradually gradually improving, and our revenue from the non convenience fee is also increasing. So our focus is already there on that. So such decisions decisions don't impact destiny of the company. I think I've been able to answer sir your question. Uh, yes, madam. Uh, just one last bit from my side. Uh, there have been some media reports which state that this uh, mandatory reservation facility in the uh, general compartments, which uh, was implemented during COVID, may not sustain completely, and some rollback may happen. Uh, for instance, in uh, 23 special trains, this uh, reservation norm is not applicable. So, do you expect a full rollback uh, sometime around in the near future? i cannot comment upon that but that this is inventory of ministry of railways but if they have converted uh, the general inventory into the second s they are also gaining out of that so i cannot comment upon the decision to to be taken by ministry of railways in the covid time they have done that but after covid when everything normalizes whether they are going to retain this or not we don't know we are not we cannot comment at this juncture however i can tell you that around 40% of our reservation is coming the excess reservation is coming normally we used to book around 8 and 1/2 lakh tickets in a day as of now our average ticket is around 12.5 lakhs that that is an add on inventory that we have got because of this booking so that add on may not be there in case the ministry would like to withdraw that but the initial for which we have projected which was projected in our dfrp or document also that 8 and 1/2 lakh tickets are going to be booked there is some increment after we had released that and from 71% of railway booking now we have reached around 81% of booking that improvement is still there and people are diverting from offline to online and the more and more digital transactions are happening in the country is also a hard fact which we should not forget before making any decision in this uh, sure madam thank you so much thank you sir thank you the next question is from the line of nitin gosar from invesco mutual fund please go ahead nitin your line is in the talk mode please go ahead thank you for the opportunity uh, uh, the question is also uh, again on the similar lines uh, on which uh, the earlier participant asked uh, can you help us understand what was uh, indian railway or government of india thinking while they were uh, uh, evaluating this proposal of uh, 50% uh, sharing of convenience fee nitin ji i may not be the right person to answer this question <laughs> i take your point ma'am uh, 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 is this deferment of proposal to uh, ask for 50% of convenience fee deferred on permanent basis or, or how should we see this as an act received by us looks uh, red can be read like that stand withdrawn okay got it and and uh, uh, on this uh, second uh, class uh, which is now become a part of the reserved category inventory 
Uh, how should we see this going forward? Uh, this will stay or, or, or the normalization will uh, come into uh, picture and we'll start losing on that four leg inventory that has got created additional? So it is very difficult for me to handle this because this inventory belongs to uh, Ministry of Railways where the general category has been converted into the reserved category. Since the people are opting for it, you mean people have not denied it. And there is a comfort zone also involved in that. Earlier they were going with the lot of uh, uncertainty. By converting this, the certainty amongst the people has also been created. There are going to be few takers who will like to continue in that. There may be a few takers who would like to have a general inventory. So perhaps at this juncture, this question cannot be answered by IRCDC. Hmm. This is the excess rain that we could capture. And we Got could it. provide the environment and could uh, could make some good losses come up the mm -hmm. by facilitating those customers and providing them the inventory, maintaining the balance, reserve, etc. So that this booking doesn't go waste. And we are able to tap in the form of a convenience fee to this. Fair point, ma'am. Uh, uh, just a clarification. So today we have an inventory available of 12.5 lakh per day. We have been able to book 12.5 tickets per day. Okay. The and for inventory the in the reserve segment is 8.5 lakh tickets in a day. And every okay. size in one ticket is around 1.7 these days. Earlier it used to be 1.9 but after COVID it is 1.72. Mm -hmm. Got it. And for the quarter what would have been the inventory, uh, sorry, ticket booking or PNR booking for uh, the quarter? Yeah, 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 I'll give you the figure. Uh, in the uh, quarter two, the total mm -hmm. ticket booked was around uh, 11 crores, uh, 11 crores, 22 lakhs, nearly, nearly around 3 point, average will be around 3.7, you can take it as 3.7 crores, and the passenger travelled in the ratio of 1.7. Got it. And one last bit on UPI, you mentioned that we are right now uh, not asking for any kind of additional charge. Uh, no, we, I did not say this. I did. I oh, said sorry, my reading was for UPI then. for UPI instead of 15 rupees, we charge rupees 10 in sleeper class, and in AC segment instead of uh, uh, 30 rupees, we charge 20, uh, 20 rupees in the case of AC class. So that is okay. to promote Atmanirbhar Bharat and promote okay. digital payments in India. And we, because we are a big gainer of the digitization. Mm -hmm. Perfect, ma'am. Uh, I think uh, that's it from my side. Thank you. I'm done from my side. Thank you. Thank you. Operator is disconnected. Can we have from the next question, please? Can we have next question, please? I think this can it Thank you. She is back. The next question is on the line of Rahul Jain from Dollar Capital. Please go ahead. Yes, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, I have a question from, uh, that we have seen this uh, massive. Uh, <clears throat> swing in our uh, stock prices, which I would blame to the uh, investor community. But part of the issue on account of, uh, you know, the input coming from railway government of India on various elements such as, you know, con convenience fee sharing and maybe merger with Chris and Railtail, those kind of events. Uh, while I can understand, you know, your limitation, but what I essentially want to convey or request is that there has to be a faster and frequent communication or clarification to avoid uh, scope for such speculation because essentially the business uh, has a lot of dependency on railway and uh, what uh, can you know uh, kind of give us comfort that if, if such event happen how uh, uh, you know we would be able to safeguard interest of the minority shareholders so the confidence which i can give i can uh... IRCDC can provide through its operating performances. But since most of our business are railway dependent, so railway as a policy maker, 
decide something and the IRCCC as a follower, as an extended arm of railways, implement that. Normally, we discuss with each other, and rather this discussion is happening very frequently on daily basis, on, on all the subjects. So these are not the, that issues are not discussed amongst each other, with each other. But there are, there have been few gaps uh, in the past. But I cannot really say the, ki, aisa nahi hota, that the people don't discuss and such kind of decisions are taken. Your discussion point has been noted and we will also try to communicate to our ministry that in, investor is worried about that and investor would like to have more confidence if this kind of a dialogue happens again and again, we'll certainly communicate to Ministry of Railway, which we right. have done also. Right. And what happens to some of the segment where, you know, we are getting uh, immensely benefited because of part of the railway uh, ecosystem, uh, but there is no revenue arrangement. I can understand in the ticketing, they have showed their uh, interest, but of course it has been withdrawn. And in catering business, we are already doing it. In tourism, uh, we pay whatever holiday charge and everything which is required. But in rail mail business, again, there is no uh, sharing as such. So what happens in case uh, something of that sort uh, is considered in that kind of a business uh, at a later point of the time? And also, uh, as you rightly said, ki, uh, what could you might have done in such an event uh, in terms of pricing increase of UPI uh, abolish, uh, discount abolishing. But uh, does that also somewhere imply that if we do a pricing hike in future, it may happen that it may come along with sharing with the railway, so eventually the benefit to the minority would not be any different? Uh, one is uh, securing the interest of minority. Second is handling the expenses of ICTC. The representation which IRCTC made to Ministry of Railways was on the basis of, one is of course was the investor's interest, and secondly the expenditure that IRCTC would like to do in upgradation of the site, because there are many things which we require to maintain this website, and the infrastructure requirement is huge. So by if railway has given us this work, so railway has also saved if 80% inventory is being booked through IRCTC for booking one ticket, railway might be spending, this was a very old calculation I have, on more than 60 rupees, railway was spending for booking one ticket. If the same work has been given to IRCTC, so you can calculate the amount of a saving which railway has done. It is the digitization that has really helped and the infrastructure placed by IRCTC and the experience of IRCTC in the last 20 years that has helped in maintaining this infrastructure in a very conservative manner. So, if, suppose we increase the price and there can be a sharing with the railways, so I don't think so key, this can be discussed at this juncture. There has to be a lot of deliberations on this subsequently with the ministry. And uh, we would like that to discuss in, in, in any case, we would be requiring f uh, funds for maintaining our infrastructure. And we would also be requiring a lot of float to handle such huge booking. And some right. other uh, arrangement for upgrading the site and making the DR site, etc., handling all the risks involved in the business. There are risks. Because we, as we know that in, there are no transaction charges in the case of a debit card, in the case of a payment which are less than 2,000 rupees. So all where we were earlier running in the non convenience resources, they are not there. So these things are happening, the industry is changing. Till the industry is changing, the flow of uh, revenue that is coming to IRCTC is helping in the handholding in the other segment. There was a time when this money was taken away in 2016-17 at the time of a uh, demonetization. At that time, catering helped. I mean, during COVID, catering and railway was not there, so internet ticketing helped. That is what the resilient business model IRCTC has. Our growth is not only vertical, it is actually horizontal. The more domain we add so that we can cover up the losses of the other segment and together as we come up as a great strength.
right and and in the uh, in the catering uh, and the tourism business if you could share your thoughts in terms of uh, when we expect the revenue getting aligned in the catering segment with the passenger traffic we have seen this license fee run rate is you know quite low compared to the normalized run rate and also similarly on the tourism business uh, our losses have widened in this uh, uh, segment in this quarter which is a bit sur surprising you know because we are seeing the general tourism and hospitality across ps have seen a massive improvement so when uh, we could see this in our numbers as well in the tourism our losses have widened as compared to the previous quarter there is a reason because the earning of the uh, tejas is being added into it and there is some revision in the tejas policy for which we have requested railway board to reconsider the haulage pattern of the tejas has been changed and uh, for which we have already requested railway board to reconsider so that our these losses can be curtailed and uh, we can at least break even in spite of the festive bookings we are not able to make good of the losses done previously secondly we have also raised certain issues of uh, the passing the benefit of the post measure during the period when the train was not running these are the few issues which we have discussed with ministry of railways because of those losses being added in the tourism otherwise if you other than tejas you talk about the tourism is in profit so this we are taking a, a concrete decision on the tejas and uh, let us see we are hopeful that we'll get some rescue out of that if we are not then we'll take a tough decisions in this subject rather we'll be constrained to take a tough decision and this would this would be like uh, reducing the frequency increasing the price we'll try to we'll try many such things are there we'll either increase price or uh, we'll uh, decrease the frequency or curtail our own expenses do the retendering so that we are able or increase the non fare revenue which we have already done money for that is yet to be uh, taken so we will try hard so that we our this segment also makes up the profit otherwise hard go tourism it's in profit and catering uh, uh, why it is catering yeah. my answer to my second question is your first question will be that catering we have already raised the matter to ministry of railways and they are taking some time for examination perhaps they are waiting for the festival period so the festival period you might have seen the crowding every year last year when in the month of april may the second wave cropped in after the festival period only so people are just waiting uh, let's hope for the good we have already uh, reminded railway board even today also right but this is actually oh, the sorry, issue is that this is this is follow up please let me allow me thank you so much uh, so uh, ma'am the, the thing is that as you just answered to some of this question you know that we have you said ki there is a haulage uh, price increase in the uh, case of tejas which has resulted into despite higher volume we incurring losses in that business again the single point uh, impact is the uh, change in policy by the railway similarly in catering also we are not able to cope it up with the uh, relevant traffic uh, based revenue because the rt is been imposed by uh, the railway so i i am not saying that they are trying to uh, do something which is not in uh, best interest of the shareholder but uh, of course the decision making for us actually lies well beyond the uh, conventional uh, thought process of the board sitting uh, at the irctc or they have their own limitations to that so that is the big big question out here that we are doing fabulously well as an organization but how we will be able to deal with such risk because we are not able to address the issue which we actually have just because it is called the call has been shot at some at some other place let's go to the root cause of it why ministry had to withdraw the catering ministry was had to take a tough call because there was a covid and there were many contact points and railway never wanted to be party in spread of covid this was a tough decision no organization if we are losing then the railway is losing equally losing because the uh, distribution of the uh, revenue is also there 45% of our share goes to ministry of railways in this so if they are also lose they have gone for gone their 700 crores in that if you recall our previous discussions that we used to do in the year 1920 that in the year 2021 our revenue from the catering 
should have been around 1500 crores out of which 45% around 700 crores would have gone to railways so railway also has forgone their revenue in the interest of a nation to save our life the tough decisions at times are taken to take care of a better to get the better deal and life saving nothing can be better than saving a life thank you the next question is on the line of sham sundar shriram from sundar mutual funds please go ahead <coughs> hi ma'am uh, good afternoon uh, thanks for taking my question uh, ma'am uh, my first question is what is the basis for this uh, revenue sharing with indian railways is there any underlying economic logic uh, to share that is the first part of the question secondly now irctc also works with many ota agents as well uh, uh, with the, where the agent charges an additional convenience fee and there is a revenue share with irctc as well is this also decided by indian railways or is this decided by the irctc board per se so tomorrow if indian railways decides to change that also is that is that something that is possible if if railways decides to change your terms of agreement with your ota agents per se so those are the two questions well i would like to answer your second question first as compared to the first like the ministry of railways has already decided that the agent can charge 10 and 20 rupees per ticket that is already decided and in that in that if the oda is there if he he cannot charge is he cannot be more than that uh, but however the irctc takes an additional money from him uh, in the form of a rupees 12 that is the decision of a ota the agreement to appoint ota is done between irctc and ota the ministry does not have any access to that however But the ministry decides the agent charge how much no, they have they pehle charge kiya hai usne jo pehle kiya hua hai decide that is continuing for all b2b and all b2 any kind of a agent can charge only this much no. 2040 hi 2040 rupees hai 2040 they can charge so wo unhone kiya hai that is being done by the and over and above what ota policy has what is b2b what is b2c how the rail rta will be there and how the gsa will be appointed is all decision internal decision of irctc management okay understood understood and uh, you said what has been the logic behind that well i have already answered that my answer remains the same that ministry has decided that ministry has withdrawn irctc is not in position to come Okay, no ma'am. I was just trying to understand: is there any economic logic in terms of because we use by Indian Railways or uh, 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 back end reservation? So, is there any any sort of economic uh, or or a logic uh, for IRCTC? I am understanding that uh, Ministry has saved lot of money by doing the online reservation. If the work is being not looked after by them, IRCTC is also incurring lot of expenditure in maintaining the infrastructure. and we need to upgrade that and this is that we have already been telling to our investors all the time that we, it is a continuous process we have already given many of uh, we have already awarded many contracts for upgrading our infrastructure understood ma'am sir can i ask one more question you said the irctc has the uh, where with all the freedom to raise the convenience fee uh now what factors that you will consider that you go into whether you have to raise the convenience fee as in uh is it uh, a simple like an uh, services inflation per se uh, or or what will uh, what will you consider yes, uh, yeah yeah yes sir yes sir please complete your question yes sir uh, yes ma'am that is my question see there are many factors when we will increase our license fee first our expenditure becomes so much that we are not able to handle our expenditure under service the revenue that we receive from the convenience fee is lesser than that as of now we are able to handle so we don't want to put any burden on the customer at the same time we have to look the overall interest of the country that is in the form of a promoting the atmanirbhar bharat concept and creating our own gateway etc so as long as we are able to handle it well and add to good amount of our revenue to our company getting good profit i don't think so there is any need uh, for the management to increase the convenience fee if there is some shortage then management will take a call understood 
understood. Thank you very much. Those are my questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Urmil Shah from Haitong Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, good evening, ma'am, uh, and thanks for the opportunity. Uh, I'll maybe try and channelize the discussion on the positives. So, if we look at the internet ticketing segment, uh, ma'am, in this quarter, uh, it appears that uh, not only the uh, uh, you know volume-based benefit has enabled uh, uh, us to do all-time high revenue. But even the non-service charge revenue uh, has uh, touched a uh, uh, all-time high uh, as regards the quarterly run rate. Uh, if you sh could throw, uh, you know, light on the same, yes. and also how should we look at it uh, over the next uh, couple of years? Well, I can tell you that the conveniency of uh, this quarter two has been around 299 crores. No. Oh. Quarter two. Quarter two is this. Just wait a moment. Sure, ma'am. Yeah. In the first half year, our total fee has been 289 crores. That is in the first half, out of it 104 in the first quarter and 185 in this quarter. non convenience earlier we had 46, now we have 80. Out of which I can give you the sharing, uh, all the time investors have been asking why the advertisement revenue from the our side has been less. Let me tell you with the great pride that this time our 20 crores almost we have received two advertisement. So where we have been able to tap a government good government uh, ads in, for our portal. Then commission also has seen some uh, very high because uh, the overall ticketing has been high, so the commission has been high in the B2C segment. And uh, AMC. AMC also, our AMC fees have also increased. So all segments, except for the SBI, where our offer was there that we will not charge revenue to some, has shown some improvement. So this... Uh, the our focus is conveniency, yes, we have to have, we have to tap that. But at the same time, we need to increase our non-conveniency resources. So this is the positive side, and there is non-conveniency has shown increase of 74%, whereas the conveniency has also shown the increase of 78% over the quarter one. Sure. Uh, my Ma'am, while on a quarterly basis, we might have variation. Uh, but if I just annualize the 80 crores, uh, you know, that comes to around uh, 320 crores on a full year basis as the non-service charge revenue. Uh, would you say that that is achievable in FY23 as a whole? Uh, we might have quarterly variation in this. Lagta hai, ho jayega. Sure, that was helpful. Uh, Ma'am, my second question was on the e-catering side. Uh, uh, if you could uh, let us know what is the kind of volume being done. Uh, as well as, uh, you know, as regards uh, uh, getting uh, the, uh, you know, aggregators, uh, not the top two ones, but uh, the smaller ones uh, to, uh, you know, get the uh, food options on board. Okay, I have a good news to share that uh, pre-COVID, I think in the month of April uh, and October 21, if I take the data, so our average meal booking, has been, uh, average meal per day booking has been around 24,210 as compared to the average of uh, 21,000 previously. So the total value of orders was to the tune of 27.8 crores. And the aggregator which are live, around 10 in number, Rail Yadri, Rail Restro, Rail Resti, Zoo, Gaj Rajani, OLF, Spicy Wagon, Komasam, Yatri Bojan, etc. Arjo. Then we have around 1,000 odd active service provider vendors who are associated with us. And we are also in process of mobilizing our own food plaza and FFU people to be mandatory food providers for our trains so that the facilities available in more and more trains. 
in uh, when uh, last time when we were doing the this earning con call we had mentioned that we are going to put in our b2c agents in the e catering at that time only two were active now 20 of such are active when uh, and our number of patients where the e catering is live has also increased to 252 so our revenue from the e catering is increasing average meal order has also increased a lot more to be done which we would be doing we are going for a massive kind of a promotion we are also in the process of a tying up with the new aggregator and new vendors also so we will see further improvement as the year passes uh, ma'am just to follow up on that uh, as regards the 20 b2c agents uh how many of them would be on the supply side or on the ordering side we have never had any problem uh, but as regards the providing the food options how many of these b2c agents uh, would be on the supply side these b2c agents are not in the supply side but we are going to have one b2c agent soon whom i will not name so, because our approval is yet in the process in a day maybe in the next coming con call or uh, investors meet by the time the approval will be there i would be sharing his or her name uh there are operators in the b2c segment who have a ticketing agents but they would be in the supply house rail yatri is one rail yatri is my e ticket catering agent also and the ticketing agent also right and yeah. uh, this commerceam commerceam is my supply agent but he is very less of a e ticketing also he does similarly Uh, we are going to have two, three more who can who have become our ticketing agent also, and uh, will also be in the supply chain for the each hotel. So they are in process of tying up with the other hotel chains who can become. Ultimately, they book orders for those hotels and the supply chain for which we have already linked up and done one to one contracts. So they are gainer of our linking with them. Ultimately, our business is gainer whether they earn or we earn. The earning to our business is remains the same. Sure, ma'am. Thank you so much, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rewant Shah from SBI Life Insurance. Please go ahead. Yeah, madam, you mentioned that we are in constant discussion with Ministry of Railways for policy-related matters. So, whether on this convenience uh, fee. Uh, uh, circular which was issued by them were we in discussion with them to understand the impact on our company or were we left blind sighted by them well i am not in position i will reiterate my answer sir i am not in position to answer this question i have already answered and the good part of is that the charges have been reversed withdrawn so let's accept the fact okay secondly could you tell us on the developments of merger with railtel and chris such things are decided by our body dpam we have not received any official communication in this regard okay and couple of more things could you provide any update on the, the privatization of trains for which we have pitted couple of uh, we have one couple of tenders and any update or progress on that and also on our payment gateway application which was pending with rbi could you give us any update on that our payment gateway application for that we have recommended changes in our moa that has gone to ministry we have discussed today also and it has gone to the top authority once the ministry approves then we would be sending to the rest of the approving bodies so that it becomes part of our memorandum of association as a main or in the main object clause after that we would be applying to rpi for the uh, for uh, getting the uh, for like getting the license for the same so that the payment aggregator services can be used so however as far as the payment gateway is concerned we can always use it okay. and uh, first thing and uh, i forgot your first question can you please repeat sir yeah yeah we have one couple of tenders for this privatization private, of trade yeah, yeah, so private we have update on that yeah. we have not received any communication so far perhaps we will get it by tomorrow or day after let's hear from them when what ministry takes a decision okay thank you that is from my that is from me thank, thank you thank you we'll move on to the next question that is from the line of bharat parekh from clsa please go ahead
Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I can, sir. Yeah, good evening, ma'am. Uh, this is Bharat Parekh. I head the infrastructure research for uh, Hong Kong headquartered investment bank called CLSA in India. I must congratulate you for the initiatives the management has taken to reach out to the market uh, and improve the communication. So I think it's a great thing, uh, and I must appreciate that. Uh, also, I just wanted to ask you, ma'am, from an investor relations perspective, uh, how do we reach out uh, to the company? Because we have been writing uh, multiple emails at investors uh, and also other email IDs, which is available on your website. But unfortunately, uh, we are not able to reach, and also nobody picks up the landline. So if you can guide us, uh, how do we reach out to you to, to understand your company a bit better? Uh, we have a defined uh, investment relation of, uh, relationship officer, Mr. Anil ah. Sharma. So far, he has been using his personal email ID. I have noted your points. Very soon, we will be communicating and putting it on our website. That uh, zero web kind of uh, ID, which is universally accepted, which can be there permanently on the website, will be created. And the person phone number of the person will also be mentioned in the uh, site. So uh, your points have been noted, sir. A good suggestion. Thank you very much for that. So right now we are emailing at a sharma2490 at the rate Is that the one, ma'am? Yes, sir. It is the same. Anil Sharma is the person. Okay. You can, can you please give me your email ID, sir? You please share after this phone call. Maybe you can, my number is there. You can give me a message. I'll find out where these mails are going. Ho sakta hai, junk mein ja rahi ho, kuch ho rao. Let me see my system. How, ma'am? So how do I reach you? That will be my pleasure, ma'am. Please, aap share kar li jega. Agar kuch bhi aisa hai to. We are ah. here to sort out the issues. We don't want any investor to say this, that they, his query, his or her query has not been answered. Uh, that is so nice of you, ma'am. Really appreciate uh, uh, the thought process you have. Uh, truly commendable, I must say. And would be my pleasure to reach out to you and be in touch with you and understand the company. Really appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. The next question is from the line of my young Babla from the Lalan brochure. Please go ahead. Hello. Yeah. Good evening, ma'am. Uh, thank you for taking my question. Uh, uh, just I wanted to delve further in the uh, non-convenience part of the internet ticketing. You said 20 crores was from the advertisements. Could you give the details of the balance uh, revenue in that? Yeah, I'll read up for you, sir. In, in the first half year, I'll take the half year figure. Yeah. Convenience fee resources, convenience fee has been 289 crores. Yeah. And... Uh, the service charges other than the i ticket has been 23 crores advertisement income uh, that is one the advertisement income is actually divided into two parts uh, for our convenience we have divided into the two parts because we are maintaining it like that in one part we have received uh, 5.84 crores and in the second part we have received around 15.37 crores then annual maintenance charges we have received around 58.34 crores Okay. Then e-wallet, that is the e-wallet, closed wallet that we run, 2.79 crores in that. And commission in the form of a B2C segment, that is 12.39 crores. So, after that, the the agent replacement charges, when we change the agent, we also charge something. Then from 139 license fee, we take it, that is also 2.36 crores. And the agent login authentication and inquiry charges also we have realized. We have monetized through inquiries. There also we have around 1.110 crores. So more and more revenues of the revenue of mon we are monet trying to monetize our website, and that is why our revenue in the non-convenience fee has been 74 percent more than the quarter one, and has been so far highest in any quarter. Thank you, ma'am. And uh, second related to the convenience fee was uh, you said 40 percent was was from the general class. Ma'am, can you give the split between AC and non-AC for the quarter in terms of percentage? जी जी बिल्कुल देती हूँ आपको I will give you for the second quarter, sir. Yeah. Second quarter average is first AC 0 0.3, that is less than 1%. You know that executive first AC put together will be around 1%. Right. Second AC is around 3.5%. Okay. Third AC is 14.9%. Okay. And AC chair car is again 3.5%. Sleeper class is 37.3%. 
second day is 40%. Okay. Sure. And our total inventory and uh, there is another class, Anubhuti class, hoti hai, mm-hmm. third day, what do you say? It's a lot of money, 0.01% cash. Mm-hmm. And the total inventory booking is around, the uh, average is 80.23% in the uh, second quarter. That is July, August and September. And uh, as of now, we have 3,000 trains for which we are providing these services. Okay, sure ma'am. And this last question was regarding the real need. I believe this quarter we had one uh, plant also up and functioning. So what is the latest uh, capacity uh, uh, per day in real need? As of now, we have uh, 15 plants operative. Hmm. Before COVID, uh, when we were there, some issues are there in the Bilaspur plant, which we are sorting out. And uh, our capacity is around 15 lakh bottles in a day, still there. But because the uh, Raidhani Shadabdi Duranto train not running, so we are running around uh, around 55 to 60% of the capacity. Maybe the festival period, during this festival period, we have certain uh, variation. If the demand might, uh, might have gone up, I'm sorry I'm not carrying that figure in front of me as of now. But the capacity is 15 lakhs. I'll certainly inform you and put it on the website if required. Okay. Sure, that's all from my side. Thank you and all the best for the rest of the year. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, due to time constraint, we'll be taking the last question. That is on the line of Madhu De from Alta Vista Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, ma'am. Uh, it's just a housekeeping question. Uh, uh, my question is, uh, uh, what was the increase in the number of trains running uh, in Q2 compared to Q1, and how does that compare to your last uh, pre-COVID quarter? Well, when we initially started, we started the, after COVID with the 25 pair of trains gradually start uh, going up and up. And uh, as of in the month of October, now I'm talking because October is also over. Today is first November. We have 3,000 trains which are running and for which we are providing the reservation. It starts coming up like this. <coughs> in the month of uh, uh, June, it was around 2,500 trains. <coughs> in July, it was 2,745 trains. Then again, August, the number of trains more or less same, 510 trains more added. In September, again, festival trains have come up. So you have 2,900 trains, 2,949 trains. Now in October, you have 3,019 trains. So the, I think we have reached almost, uh, as far as the reserved accommodation is concerned, in the form of a special range, near to normalization with 10 or 15 percent short. So uh, when do you expect uh, the full catering services to start? Uh, and uh, what percentage of the trains you are uh, offering catering at this point in time? If the train where you provide pro, uh, these services, and where catering services and where you provide the reserved uh, accommodation cannot be actually compared. Because for every train you have to provide the reservation and you can provide the catering in the train where you have uh, painty cars and where the trains which are running during the day. If the trains are running during the night, there is no need of a catering. So I can tell you the trains which are running with the WCB, painty cars we call them. The number is 346. And train where we have a train time vending is 288. So the total number of our trains is 634 against the 500 train or trains. I think last quarter when we had discussion, we were running around 550 such trains. Now it's 634. And most of the trains are having contract. So we have been able to place for all of them. Even the short term contracts are also running. We have been given all trains on the contract. Except four train which we run the departmentary uh, because there's one litigation going on and we have to handle that. Okay, ma'am. Thank you very much and all the best. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the last question. I now have the conference over to Ms. Mrs. Rajni Hasija, CMD of IRCTC, for her closing comments. It has always been pleasure interacting with investors and good to know how industry thinks about us. 
there have been certain ups and downs in the past and uh, life says as life says move on so we believe in moving on and we are here and presently today our quarter 2 results where we have really registered good amount of our profit in all the eight segments my cfo has already read it in real near we have bridged up the losses and in the catering we have reduced the losses to the extent that the losses have reduced to only 19 lakhs the good days are ahead it looks normalization is happening vaccination is happening the impact of our covid is gradually going away we need to be little cautious during the festival season so i here by close saying that in the tourism sector also in the hardcore tourism we are really doing fantastic and in the hardcore tourism we really making profit and we are trying to curtail the losses of the stages also uh, to the extent possible and we are examining it very aggressively and taking tough calls on each and every department in the stages with this i finish my uh, words here and wishing you a very very happy diwali maybe the next year after diwali is very very uh, happy and healthy for every investor everyone in this country thank you very much sir thank you ladies and gentlemen on behalf of